Hey, hey, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome in. Please feel free to uh, say hello in the chat box. When you get a second there, let us know, uh, especially if it's your first time. Uh, Elon's having a bit of an issue getting on, so I'm trying to troubleshoot him on the side. What's going on, guys? <clears throat> there he goes. There we go. My Zazo. <laughs> Not really sure why it wasn't working. Very strange. <clears throat> Just say hi for one second. Let me work my mic yeah. up here. Hi, guys. Nice to be back with all you. You're back in Florida where everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. Especially statement. the weather. Definitely a statement I never thought I'd hear myself say. The what? Ne definitely a statement I never thought I'd hear myself say. <laughs> Florida's not known for the place that makes sense. No, but they've they've somehow in their conundrum of weirdness have figured some things out. Yeah, I guess I'm so. I'm not really sure how. All right. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Hope you guys had a uh, nice holiday week, weekend, if you celebrated. And it's good to be back with you all. Uh, Elon and I are, are slowly moseying into a kind of like a, how would you call it? Like a, a downgraded schedule. Hibernation. <laughs> Hibernation mode. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna keep doing the Tuesdays uh live coaching stuff that we already have in the books, but uh for the most part we're meditating, reading, and doing creative work over the next month to kind of rejuvenate walking into the new year, which feels really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if it's, uh, if it's your first time here, we know there's a lot of new people in here and, and it's your first time being on a live call with us, uh, just say first time in the chat box. If you want, you can let us know where you're from or any aspirations you have of why you're here, what you want to learn and what you hope to gain from being part of our community. Um, if you really, really are new, just so you know, my name is Guy Elon's over there. Uh, I'm out in uh, sunny San Diego. Elon's now in sunny Florida as of a few months ago. Just picked up and uh, moved his family down there. And uh, we are not just the hosts of Old Souls and Seekers. We're also the co-founders of a company called Satori Prime. You probably see the logo somewhere on this screen. And uh, we've been on a personal mission of personal growth, development, entrepreneurship for uh, about two decades now. And our passion is to share the things that we've learned in wisdom practices and um, growth, transformation and healing work that we have uh, established kind of a reputation for being really, really good at bringing this work through. Um, and that's really the goal of this company is to give people uh, not just the education and understanding, but also the direct experiences that one um, really gets to have on their own in order to uh, increase their level of, of awareness, uh, expand their consciousness, um, become a better communicator, learn how to deeply heal themselves from within, um, and also just become more successful in the areas of life that we all find important. So uh, that's where we're here. Uh, today, we're going to talk to you guys about stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. I don't know about you guys, but maybe the last few years have been uh, additionally stressful for you. So um, Today, we'll have kind of an overarching conversation about these things, um, why we think that most people's approach with dealing with them uh, may not be working for people, and give you guys a little bit of uh, direct experience, perhaps, and, and how it is that we work with these aspects, and then we'll leave a little bit of time at the end here for uh, some Q&A. Does that sound good? Sounds great. <laughs> I, love, so, uh, uh, I don't know who wrote that, but... Uh, he said, first time, want to reconnect with my soul. By the way, maybe drop that link in there that they can uh, so yeah. use a, a streaming course. service called Restream. Um, and it doesn't show, like it shows us, but if you're not, if you don't click this link, we don't actually see your names. We just see Facebook user. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you click the link, you can actually see your names in this uh, program here. No link today. I actually accidentally closed the link, so I can't get it back. Oh, they only no show right today. Start, yeah. You it's are okay. dubbed Facebook user. Well, welcome, <laughs> Facebook user. It's uh, Ron Doyle. Is who oh, Ron. I'm awesome. In the group. Yeah. Welcome, Ron. So I'll let you kick it off. You've been gone for a bit, if you want. Sure. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we've kind of started to map out through the years and years and years of doing this work is these three very specific phases of transformation. And so uh, our work, we like to do a couple of things. One, sometimes we share maps with you. So this will be one of those maps where you can kind of like start to see where you are on this map. Uh, primarily, however, we love to have people play in the actual territory. So the way I explain to people, you know, we could look at a map of New York City, Times Square, all you want, but that doesn't touch the experience of actually standing in Times Square, right? So like as much as you study the map, being in the territory of it is going to feel very, very different. And so here we're all about experiences. And I don't believe that you can learn anything worthwhile uh, without experience. I'm actually just listening to, I know guys too, um, Will Smith just wrote his memoir and he talks about this as well, that like, it doesn't matter how much you prepare, it, the experience is everything. Like we learn nothing basically without the actual experience of it. So we're going to give you a map today. And so wherever you find yourself on the map, you know, just a word of warning, don't make yourself wrong. Like this is just a process, right? Like your soul, I think Ron was saying that he came here to connect with his soul. It's like our souls drop into this human body from this infinite being, we drop into this like little thing and now we're just trying to figure out what the hell is happening over here. So whatever your journey has been like, uh, you can honor that and just that it is part of your journey. And so the map that we're going to give you right now is what we have seen both from personal growth and obviously having coached uh, tens of thousands of people. So <clears throat> the first place that people usually start when they start down this path is either like a seminar or someone will hand you a book. Most of you probably remember the first book that someone gave you that was like, there's this whole other world that I just wasn't aware of. I mean, like in the comment box, I'd be just curious out of curiosity. What was that first book or what was your first experience in the world of personal development? Maybe it was some seminar, like a weekend seminar or a retreat or something that you walked into. And that was that moment that was very clearly like there was life before this and life after this. And it kind of is the thing that, yeah. So someone said, Oprah, beautiful. So it's one of those things that kind of starts you down this path of like, wow, I didn't know this whole world existed. And oh, the alchemist, that's a good one. <clears throat> and it kind of opens up your world to all of these other things, right? So people are saying celestial prophecy, age 12. Wow. I love that book, by the way. Uh, Dalai Lama, freedom of exile, power of now. Amazing. It was, uh, beautiful, Celest beautiful books. Celest Celest is this Celestial or Celestine Prophecy? Celestine Prophecy. Celestine yeah, I think prophecy. it was Celestine Prophecy. I remember that book. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of opens your world up and then you become hungry for it, right? You become, you, you, most of you guys, even though you started with one, you've probably read all of these books that people are mentioning right now. And if you haven't, I'm sure you are writing them down because you're going to go and get them afterwards. Um, <laughs> But like every book excites you and every time you open a page or every time you watch a new video or maybe you even take a course, it's this very expansive, amazing experience. It's like your, your brain is on fire from receiving all of this new information and it's very, very exciting. And your life at this place goes from like tuk, 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 and it all of a sudden just like shoots up. You just start having aha moment after aha moment. It's very, very exciting. And one of the things that we notice shifts in this phase on top of the excitement and you learning is this big shift from everything is happening to me, right? So like most people before they start personal development, it's very victim. It's like, they're doing this to me. This 
circumstance happening to me? Why me? Like all that kind of stuff. And what personal development at the core of it gives you is this sense of responsibility that you are responsible for how your life looks, tastes, feels, etc. And so you create this shift from everything is happening to me to everything is happening for me, right? And you really start to begin uh, the the level of that. Um, that's not what I had. In I know it isn't because the in the calendar I couldn't find the headline, so I took next week's and made it this week's. Oh well, <laughs> we're, we're we're already we're already going down this route. Just, so, so just, hole, so. just to just rewind, Elon and I had uh, we mixed mixed up on topics. So see if you can go make a make a U turn somewhere. We could just switch them. What's the, we're already halfway down this rabbit hole. I could just tell you that everyone everyone came for for that particular thing. That's why you're going down a, a different different route. Uh huh. Well, do you? So what was the other one? Uh, it's on the top over there. Stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. Got it. Yeah, you're doing. You're doing. Yeah, we're. We, you, I get why you went that, but that's why I tried to mention the headline before we got started. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, so confusion between me and Elon. Okay. Well. So finish your thought on that, and then we'll we'll pivot. Well, it's kind of like we we just told him step one. Now we're going to leave him without step two or three. So a question for you guys: Do you want to continue down this path, or do you want to switch to this uh, stress, anxiety, and overwhelm? They're not going to know what what the other conversation is. So just you either have to choose for them, or okay. continue the conversation. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the the steps, and we'll we'll okay. do stress and anxiety next okay. week. Okay. Um. So that's, that's kind of what happens is right. Like we have this expansive growth and then we reach this place. It's like super exciting. The other thing that we notice is, um, in your excitement, you go and tell everyone that they should read this book or go do the seminar or go watch this video. And everyone's like, stop fucking talking to me about this. You know, like, leave me alone. My life is fine. Stop telling me that I'm broken or damaged. Like, and you even probably lose a few friends during that process. And then something happens, and this is what we call kind of phase two. Phase two is where you get to this place where the books or the seminars or the work that you've been doing starts to become a bit repetitive. I don't know how many of you guys, like you pick up these books now and it's just like you're reading the same thing, regurgitated, but just spun a different way. And you get to this place where it's a bit disheartening because whereas at the beginning you grew up really, really quickly. Now it's like you start to plateau. And as you start to plateau, you keep reaching and reaching and reaching for more information and more because like something's got to be out there because what I've done hasn't really gotten me to where I want to get to. But now everything is just like same old, same old, and I'm starting to feel stuck. And it starts driving that seeker part of us a little bit crazy because you kind of feel like someone's withholding some big secret because you'll look out there and you're like, well, that person's kicking ass in life and that person's kicking ass in relationships. Like they must know something that I don't know. And I'm going to keep looking, 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 looking. So how many of you guys are kind of like you can sense maybe you're in level one in stage one and how many of you guys are in stage two, just kind of see where you're at. And I'll keep talking about stage two as you're doing that. And then something starts to begin at stage two and I call it kind of the dip. Now, it's not just that we plateau, it's that we get to this place where we start dipping. And the dip is the sense of this stuff doesn't work because you thought that your life should look like this by now. Like you should be farther along. Your finances should be farther along. Your health should be farther along. Your relationships should be better, etc. Because I've done all of this work. I've read all of these books. I've done what people have told me, but it's still like, I'm kind of still here. Maybe I noticed some improvements, but I'm still here. And this is where the doubt starts to come in. And you start to doubt. You go like, maybe none of this shit works. Maybe I'm, I don't work. Maybe I'm doing it all wrong. And this is kind of like a, a, a very pivotal moment for people. And the pivotal moment is, are you going to use this dip 
to come back into stage three or, and you've seen people do this and this might even be you. And if it is, I just want to honor that this is a perfectly normal place to be. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. This is just kind of how it goes. Some people will fall off the cliff because they will start to buy the voice in their head and the doubt and all that stuff. And they will actually start to fall off this cliff. They will relinquish all the reading. They will relinquish all these practices and habits that they've created over years and years and years. They'll throw it all away and go, I'm fucking done with this. None of this shit works. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a, I don't want to say a scary place, but it's, it's where we end up finding a lot of the people that join the old souls and seekers group is that is at this place where they've done a tremendous amount of work. They've kind of reached this plateau. Some of you might even be in this dip. And what we really focus on helping people is taking them into stage three. And from stage three, you're basically growing like a weed, just like you did in the beginning. So what's in per- the shift? In, in perpetuity. In perpetuity, yeah. It's not like, in fact... Um, I think with medicine, they say like an inverse, right? An inverse reaction, I think is mm-hmm. what they talk about, where it's like, you know, sometimes when you take medicine or a supplement, it's like you need more and more and more of that supplement to kind of feel that way. With this at stage three, you actually need, it's, it's like it works better and better and better the more you do it. So the impact is actually better and better, whereas Oh, diminishing, like, like a diminishing return, right? Like you read the books and the, the return on them diminishes here. It's like the more you do the practices, the better and better it gets more, more utility. No, less. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the shift is now, whereas for the first two stages, what does personal development is your mind, right? Who's reading the books? Who's taking the actions? Mind, 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 mind. And so when we seek information, it's like, we're going to feed more information to the mind. And if you think about it, we talk about this a lot in all of our programs. It's like, at best, when we do that stuff, our life improved tremendously. But at best, when you actually think about it, what you're doing is you're creating new management systems for the things that have been running your life. So if you're someone who's afraid of, um, abandonment. If you're someone that's afraid of loss, if you're someone that's afraid of losing or embarrassment or whatever it is, you've created structures to keep yourself safe. As you collect more personal development information, you have a better understanding of why you do the things you do, how it showed up in pattern, all these things. So you have a lot of cool management skills, but if I were to ask you, has anything internally shifted? Like, have you healed out of the part that feels alone? Have you healed out of the part that looks in the mirror and feels ugly? Have you healed out of the part that most of us would say no? So the shift now in stage three goes from doing work here to actually having awareness shift out of the mind and move into the body where healing can actually take place. And the shift is life is happening from life is happening for me now to life is happening through me. And what you begin to get curious about is not how my mind perceives the world, And not how these patterns and things got created, but how is my body? How is my heart? How is my stomach? How are my solar plexus? How are they perceiving the world? How are they feeling this rather than how am I thinking about this? And And once you shift the cure, go ahead. I was going to say, and I want to add more and more thing where it's like, uh, to me, if, if you're going to step from the phase two and phase three, and I put this up here because Michelle said, you know, I feel like I've been in this uh, in this phase for a long time because phase two kind of is. It's a pretty long phase for people, people to be in. A lot of people never even step out of it. They will they'll investigate Actually. that most of their lives. And we're not saying that's that's bad. But like Elon said, you're going to start feeling this tapering. And, and there's a lot of management and coping 
in this part of it. Like you're just managing yourself better. You're probably coping with, with challenges better. And so there feels because there is, there's progress, right? Like I'm no longer at the effect of the things I was uh, uh, at the effect of before I see myself taking action in places where I was scared or anxious or stressed out before. Like you, you grow this capacity and that's a, that's a major thing. The way I think, you know, is when you start healing something is when you're no longer in the seat of trying to cope with it or manage it at all. It just kind of is present or it isn't present. And, and in phase three, I think where concern is the wrong word here, but what you're most concerned with, like what you're most curious about is the quality of your awareness. Yeah. It's like, am I being aware of the stress while it's here? And it's not like, am I in the stress? It's am I in my awareness noticing the stress, which is very, very different. And so for some of you guys, like, and we give examples of this again, we can do our, our general demo here. But if you close your eyes, you'll notice that there's still a part of you that can see, right? Like it can, it can look within, it can look without, it can, um, it's, and it's beyond thought. It's the, the, the thought comes as a function of the awareness. Because it's really, what am I aware of first? Am I aware of my problems? Am I aware of my spouse? Am I aware of the sensations in my body? Am I aware of the temperature of the environment? And then, then there's going to be thoughts that correlate to the awareness. But whether or not you had ears to listen or eyes to see, and we know this from um, you know very famous people who've been deaf, dumb, or blind, is that there's still an awareness inside and there's no less of a, an experience of being alive when the senses are offline than when the senses are online. In fact, the senses can take us out of our awareness. And in uh, the more Eastern traditions, the more Eastern philosophies, they don't talk about five senses like we do in the Western world. They talk about six senses, the sixth one being the mind, meaning the awareness that's watching it all. And if you start digging into uh, the latest research in quantum physics and stuff like this, this is what science right now is most concerning themselves with is what is this awareness that's showing up in the lab? What is this awareness that is redirecting all these tests and having things show up differently than we expected? And suddenly they're noticing that the only really important thing is this awareness. And, and more interestingly is what's this correlation and this relationship between awareness and the way that reality is unfolding and being experienced. And so that's what we really want to investigate here with these different steps is, again, not just happening for me, right, as the person who's understanding from the mind, but starting to notice through the awareness, the relationship that you have with how this reality, aka what we call the organic hologram, right, is in relationship to you and this energy and this quality of this awareness. And so that's where it starts getting curious. It's like, well, how do I shift that quality? Or how do I increase that quality? Or how do I just expand more into my awareness so that I'm more and more aware of this relationship and I can start seeing that maybe you're not in control, but there is definitely a level of causality between the quality of the energy that you're, that you're consistent with, the quality of the awareness and how life is unfolding in front of you. Yeah, really, really well said. And so <clears throat> awareness becomes the new game, right? Like in level three or, or stage three, Awareness becomes the it curiosity. Mm -hmm. And awareness for most humans, even when you're in level one or level two, awareness is just simply sitting here. It is like somewhere in the brain, kind of behind your eyes. It is what is watching through your eyes. It is what is having and, you know, just witnessing all of these thoughts. And right. So it's when we, in level one, before level one, we have nothing. We're just at the impact of this voice in our head, et cetera. Then we start to throw all this stuff and awareness is watching all of it from here. In level three, we actually can move awareness out of mind. And so when people say that, you know, I can't meditate properly because I can't get my mind to shut up. If you listen to any of the Rinpoches, these are like the master, you know, meditators in the Himalayas. They're like, you'll never quiet the mind. The mind does what the mind does. It's like a kid cries, a dog barks, your mind is going to talk to you incessantly. And the idea and notion that most people practice of, oh, if I could just get rid of this thing, if I could just fix this one way or overcome this thing that I do all the time to self-sabotage, I'll be great. 
But you've been trying that for years. And can I interject again? Yeah, I was going to say, and look, if you're meditating from that level two awareness, right? Let's call it that. And and what you have learned is, okay, I can understand enough about my mind. I can then learn how to manage myself better, cope with the stress of life. Then of course, you're going to look at meditation from that point of view going like, I got to manage my thoughts better. And so you'll use it, right? Because that's the level of consciousness that you're you're working from. So you're always going to deal with things from the perspective that you're in. And if your perspective is I got to manage and cope, then you're going to use meditation as a, as a management and coping tool. And you see this time and time again where people meditate and they're like, oh, this is a, this is to relieve my stress. You know, this is to to calm myself down. And yeah, that stuff works unconditionally right from that level of mind. But when you start stepping up into the seat of awareness, which for those of you guys who have read um, Michael Singer's books, um, that's kind of the definition he gives it. So for a lot of us, it seems like, oh, and Elon has been saying this a lot, and I think it's really true. It's like, oh, when I get to the seat of awareness, I will have won this game if there is you know, a winning in this game, which there isn't, but let's just say it's this progression. And really, it's like the game just begins when you finally find the seat of awareness. Now, the real question is, well, how do I find that? And, I, and ironically, it's a very simple process to find it. Okay. Now, once, once you have found it, what you can cultivate from there to us, seemingly, at least from our experience right now, is then infinite in nature. It no longer has any boundaries whatsoever because it's like, um, it's like, where does the universe stop expanding? It's like asking that question because the universe is really just a subset of, of different consciousness and awareness that's expanding out. You can expand out as much as you want your consciousness as well. So you might start by being able to expand like a few feet, you know, right in our, in our terms. But it's like your ability to expand that awareness out and become aware of of it all, so to speak, is infinite in nature. And that's why there is a um, we always say there's no boredom in awareness. Like there's you can't be bored when the moment you get to the seat of awareness, because every moment of every day, every sensation, every thought, every little thing that is entering this awareness becomes immediately interesting because you stop trying to manage and cope your environment. You stop trying to affix it the way that you think it's supposed to be. And you start realizing I am just this thing, whatever this thing is, this thing, this infinite expanse, uh, this God-like energy that is just watching it unfold. Now we get, you know, we're in third density reality. And so our mind is only able to open so much to what's here, but there are all sorts of elements beyond what most of us have been trained to observe life, right? Like most of us are like, this is what's happening. This is in front of me. This is my stress. This is my spouse. It's like object, 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 object. And so we don't start noticing, and this is really what awareness is amazing at, is starting to notice these very subtle levels of reality. And the more subtle the awareness becomes, it's like the more interesting reality actually gets. And you stop expending your time trying to figure out how to change what's occurring. And you just start realizing that when something is occurring that you don't like, a stress, anxiety, and overwhelm, right? To kind of tie in the other conversation here. When when that's happening, instead of going like, oh, crap, what do I need to change out here? You start looking inside, like, where where is awareness not yet with that thing? And, and wherever awareness is not is where your conditioned mind is. Let me say that again. Wherever awareness is not is where your conditioned mind is. It's kind of like you're either one or the other. You're either operating out of the conditions that have been passed down to you from your lineage, lineage, your parents, your society, your culture, or you're just this kind of open expanse that's just like just watching, observing, and allowing for it to move. Now, what's interesting is when we sit in the awareness it's like watching music or a movie. There's different scenes, but nothing ever gets stuck. Everything is coming and going, coming and going, arising and passing, arising and passing, arising and passing. This is the nature of things. Things come into being and they fall out of being. We come into being, we fall out of being. The trees, the air, everything is coming and going, coming and going. But the conditioned mind, it doesn't feel that way. When something comes, the conditioned mind gets upset and so it gets stuck on it. And it can almost like feel like uh, like we're elongating the time in which we're having that experience because the mind can't let go of it. It gets very attached. If you want a good metaphor for this, um, if you're doing like really intense cardio, 
think about the difference of just like kind of being in the experience, doing it, doing it, and doing it, or having someone count that every second that goes by while you're like intensely running in place or doing a sprint, you know, like if someone, <laughs> if you're doing a plank and the person's like 10 more seconds, 10, nine. And as I count those last 10 seconds, those 10 seconds can feel like an eternity yeah. when you're suffering because the mind is like, I just want this to be over. I want this experience to end. And so it has a certain attachment to reality looking different than it is in that moment. If you're in awareness, it's fluid. If anybody's ever gone into a cold plunge, right? Like you've ever sat in a, a small pool of very cold water. It's very shocking in the beginning, super shocking. And so the, you, you lose your breath and the blood flow from your, from your body starts going into a panic state. So it starts sending all the blood flow into the necessary organs because the body's like, oh crap, we're going into fight or flight right now, right? And I could tell you as somebody who's done that many, many times, there are people that panic and then have to get out or they grit their teeth and, you know, like really like fight their way through it and they're suffering the entire time. Or if you're trained and you know how to find center and go into awareness, it's actually rather easy to sit in that water for four or five minutes, even longer periods of time. In fact, you could, you start noticing that the body's actually getting warm because it's getting warm with awareness. And then the, the cold is, is less about this judgment that it's cold and more that there's a sensation touching the body. It just becomes this subjective experience that has nothing to do with your opinion of what's actually happening. It's just happening and you're watching it happen. And so you can sit in this water for quite a period of time. And if you've ever had that experience, whether you realized you were popping into awareness or not, or you're practiced in things like that, I'm telling you right now, those are moments in your life that you have probably glimpsed awareness, whether you chose to be there or not. And it is a reason why so many people like that practice. They don't realize that they're kind of uh, inadvertently training themselves how to be more in awareness and less in the conditioned mind. Yeah. And so that's, that's the shift, right? It's out of mind and having awareness be fixed in mind and having awareness be able to travel. And the reason that people get stuck in mind so much is because the mind's job is to try to keep you safe. It's try to keep you alive. And all these protection mechanisms that you have to protect your heart from being broken again, protect yourself from being embarrassed, protect yourself from feeling like a coward, protect yourself from feeling like a loser, whatever it might be. When that's all, when the mind looks down and goes, oh no, they're going into that thing again, that's where this becomes very, very overactive. And the more tools we give this thing, the more smart or clever it becomes, right? But at the end of the day, there's no actual healing. No healing takes place from the mind. Understanding, absolutely. Patterns, recognizing your patterns and strategies, absolutely. But as far as healing is concerned, you tell me is that the person that you love, your, your, your partner in life, like, do they keep showing up the same way and you're just waiting for them to read that book or do that seminar so they can finally get on, on the page with you and like shift? Or do they keep doing the same thing? You know, does your boss keep showing up the same way? Maybe you've even left jobs only to find that the next boss is just like the first one. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with them. That has everything to do with you and the way that you perceive the world. And when these parts need protection because they haven't fully been healed, you're going to keep recreating a very consistent, even though to you're not liking it, a very consistent patterned existence of reality. So when we can shift awareness and actually drop our awareness into the body, you're going to experience things that you have closed off from experiencing for a long, long time. Uh, the thing that I think is, is pretty universal, it's like we all have this, this thing that we do when like emotions start to come up, we just like close this place off and we just drop it down with this. It's like, we don't do it with your hands, but it's this thing innately inside that goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> I can't show them that I'm sad. I can't show them that I'm sad. I can't show them that I'm angry. And we just keep pushing it down and pushing it down. And it's that habitual practice that keeps all of that stuff in there. So when we can let that all be, and that comes with safety 
and trust. And one of the things that I keep telling everyone, like I've had conversation after conversation recently, and this is what I just want. If you're new here, hopefully you can get this. If you've been around us for a while, you know, just let them know in the comment box if this resonates for you. Like people don't join old souls and seekers or any of our programs to learn from Guy and I. They're not here for that because Guy and I are not brilliant enough to teach you intuitively what your body needs to have the healing that it needs. What we have curated here though, through our work and the ability to transmit this work is there's an opening to an energetic field that has wisdom way beyond what you have, certainly way beyond what Guy and I have, that is benevolent, it is intuitive, and its only goal is for you to receive the healing that you came here to receive. And so if we can help you to open up to this force, to begin to trust this force, you don't need Guy and I. This is so beyond what we can offer you. And so all it is is like, hey, I want to come and I want to sit in this pool with oh, you. Your audio. My audio? <clears throat> yeah, I can't hear you now. Test, test. Oh, no, it's gone. Can you guys just check in? Oh, it was hold on. on that side or in the back? Did you guys lose his audio too? Did I lose my audio or is it just Guy? I'll give you a 30 seconds to... Test, 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 test. No. Test, 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 test. Yeah, it's on your end. Oh, you can hear him? Oh, okay. Okay, it's my end for some reason. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So, <clears throat> perfect. Thanks, guys, for that, for that okay. feedback. So, when you're in that place and you can sit in that pool with us, open system this energy will actually work on you in the perfect way. It's like, like the most intuitive surgeon ever knowing exactly what to un unfold and release and all of these things. And that's what we, that's what's on offer here. It's like, stop trying to gain more understanding. That's what's going to keep you more in level one and level two. If you're in level one and you're enjoying that ride, by all means, keep enjoying that ride, okay? I loved it, right? But if you're finding yourself in level two where that there's diminishing returns, right? This is that shift. Out of mind, into body. Awareness out of here and into here. And that's what creates that and I'm not even talking like, you know, if you thought it was parabolic beforehand, this is not, this is not, oh, I learned this from a book or, oh, I heard this great line or, oh, I'm regurg regurgitating this piece of information. Imagine like getting wisdom that is just perfectly curated for you. It is your truth in this very moment, not mine, not guys, not this author or that author, like your truth. What if you can create that connection? That's that whole next level and it never ceases to exist. It never ceases to amaze. It will just leave you in awe moment after moment after moment. Yeah. So why don't we do a few shifts back and forth between the mind space and more of the awareness space? So we'll give you guys a little demo. Um, but if you have any questions on anything we're talking about now and you feel like populating them uh, in there, uh, we'll see if there's anything that's um, that would be valuable here to answer, or we can answer you privately. But uh, if you do have any questions about mindset versus awareness or anything like that, but right now we'll do a little bit of a demo with you guys, so you get a kind of a, a feel for the work. And we just want to let you know that this is what's beautiful about this work is even though explaining it can sometimes even feel complex or like there must be a lot of steps to coming into this awareness. This is the the truth is, is that it's very very simple. Right. Uh, we always say, like, if you want to scale a mountain, you want to climb up Everest in, in practice, it's very simple. Every, you get up, you start putting one foot in front of the other and you end up walking up this mountain. Right. Of course, we know it's never quite as easy as that. 
the truth is though, everything we teach here is as simple as putting one foot in front of the other. And then of course, as you do this work, you're inevitably gonna hit certain places in your system, just like anybody walking up a mountain is eventually gonna hit a place as they walk up that mountain where they're too sore or too scared or there's something to transcend and the mind is going to calculate and do its things. And it's going to say, I don't want to move beyond that. I don't know how. And it's going to want to get you uh, to pull back away from that. And so when we step into awareness, it's the same thing because as we move into awareness, it opens up aspects of ourselves to ourselves that we have hidden from ourselves. Okay. And our mind is extraordinarily good. It, it, they're even again, seeing this in, in, quantum physics now, how the mind creates reality and then creates its own amnesia to not notice that it's creating its reality. Like loop, loop, loop that around. Like if you've ever seen the Wizard of Oz, you are both the people who are seeing the magic happen and the man behind the curtain who doesn't know he's behind the curtain, right? Like you, you are all these different aspects that we see in the, these movies and books of different characters. And so like the mechanism is set up to literally hide itself from itself, which is why viewing from the mind is never going to help you see the mind. You get that? Or truly understand how it protects you or all the different things that it does. That can only be seen from a different place to observe it. And so we want to learn how do we spend more and more of our time taking those steps every single day from that higher perspective, from that alternate level of mind that can observe all things, including all the craziness that the mind does, even observing how it is that the mind's creating its own reality. So um, I know a lot of you guys here are from uh, classes and stuff like that, but it's always valuable to do this, this exercise. Every time you do a repetition in this exercise, uh, something else opens up for you, right? So we're going to just have you um, place one hand up like this. Okay. Let me go in the big box. Hold on. Big box, big box myself. So you're going to put one hand up like this. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes so you can notice your awareness as well. And now I'm going to ask you to place your awareness on your hand. Okay. Notice I'm not asking you to look at your hand. I'm asking you to place awareness on your hand. And what we're looking for here is we're going to, we want to notice the phenomena of placing awareness on something in space. So we're just using our hand as kind of like a guidepost here. And then what do we start noticing about our hand is the question here. So what are you noticing about your hand? And so we've asked this question to, you know, thousands of people at this point in time. So I'll relate to you what is normally said. People start saying things like, I feel tingles in my hand or heat in my hand or even coolness in my hand vibration in my hand. Some people say energy in my hand. And so there's no wrong answer as to what you can feel in your hand and what we're looking for. And would it be fair to summarize by just saying you feel more sensation in your hand? That's what I'm really looking for is for you to notice that as you place awareness on your hand, there's sensation now or increased sensation on your hand that just a moment before was not there. Okay. So you're probably experiencing that. So now just try putting up the other hand, whatever the opposite hand is for you. So if you were left, put up your right. If it was right, put up your left and just shift the awareness from this hand to the other hand. And then you can put the first one down and just, I want you to notice that that's not a fluke and that I'm not doing anything. This again is just simply placing awareness on the other hand and then starting to notice if you're starting to feel increased sensation in that hand, most likely you are. We've, I don't think we've ever done this demo for anybody who said they have not felt something in their hand. Okay, and now you can put your hand down and just the same with the speed of awareness, moving it down to your left foot, for example, and seeing as the awareness moves to your left foot, if now you're experiencing increased sensation in your foot, And if you are, just say I in the chat box, just type by in the chat box. So I get a little feedback from you. And so isn't this so interesting because we're doing something so innate, so intuitive. First thing is to notice is 
no uh, instructions were needed on how to move your awareness. You knew immediately how to do it, whether you thought about it or not. There was an immediate intuit into how to move awareness. So notice that this is a natural phenomenon that all humans and probably all sentient conscious beings know how to do. <clears throat> and we also want to notice that by moving awareness, that there is a direct physiological effect on our body. In this case, we're noticing a subtle sensation or subtle vibration in the body. And so if you've ever heard the, the line uh, in spiritual circles that where your attention goes, energy flows, this is not a euphemism. That's actually exactly what's happening. By placing awareness on a, any part of our body, what starts going there is a, a chi flow, like an energy flow. And so you start noticing this increased sense of energy sensation that people describe as heat or coolness or vibration, right? Again, that's just how your mind is interpreting increased sensation. And then furthermore, energy acts like a magnet for uh, blood and nutrients in our body. And so you actually start getting more blood flow to that area. Again, I'm not making this up. This is scientifically proven. And if you've ever wondered how like a, a yogi who can sit there and, um, you know, can sit in sub zero temperatures or heal themselves faster, this is it. It's just a, a focused awareness, essentially. They can hold. If you think about like most people, minds are like a dull knife, you know, like the old, um, uh, Abraham Lincoln example. It's like, if you give me six hours, I'll spend four of them sharpening my, my ax, two of them chopping down woods. So it's the same thing here. It's like by, by focusing awareness, by learning how to do that, you can actually sharpen your awareness and be, uh, even more, um, competent, let's say at focusing awareness. And so more energy will move to that part of the body. You'll be able to notice more subtle energy and so on and so forth. It's just a, again, a cultivation of practice like anything else. And so see what it's like for just a moment. Notice that your awareness, like when we usually ask people like, where, where are they? Like, where are they located? Most people point to their heads. Occasionally some people point to their hearts and, you know, we say that's cause you're being cute and you want to, you want everyone to think your heart, heart centered and, and humans are heart, heart centered, but most of us have been conditioned to bring all our awareness here and localize it behind the eyes, or that's at least how we, we experience it. And so I just want you to notice that it just in this one moment of putting this hand out here, you actually unlocalized, right? You took this local awareness and instead of having it localized, you through intent and choice, unlocalized it and moved it here, or at least part of it here. And again, there was an immediate physiological effect on your body. And you may even notice a calming in your nervous system as well, if you're really paying attention. And so just try this again, bring, bring the awareness back to your mind. And then if you want, you can use your hands like little um, antennas, like little satellites here around your hand and see if you can bring your awareness out of the mind, out of the localized mind and just bring it towards your two hands. And as you do that, see if you can notice if there's any sort of shift that you can notice about your state or maybe even the way that your body feels. Yeah, there you go. Whew. You might start noticing that you feel more relaxed. maybe more like a, a restful state. We often describe this as a uh, white void. And so again, bring it back towards the mind. See if you can notice a subtle shift that starts happening. So dropping in the hands, bring your awareness back towards the mind, just kind of let it go back to where it normally goes. And then you might start noticing that there's like a, a tension that comes in, um, oftentimes it's described as a density, like it gets more dense here. The mind is, the mind has this very dense view of reality. Okay. So again, just see if you can notice that density. And then again, bringing the hands up and bringing your awareness towards the hands. Yeah. Yawning. If somebody said they're yawning, 
you know, yawning is a sign of the body relaxing and of it actually, uh, it's also recognition that your body may not have been breathing. And so when we yawn, right, we take a deep breath. It's like a, you know, it's our body's natural inclination to tell us we're not actually breathing deeply. We're, we're holding a lot of tension. And so the yawning begins. If anybody's ever taken um, like psilocybin, one of the things that generally does when you take it is you start yawning because the, the muscle tissue, the fascia, everything is relaxing as a function of taking it. It's also why it's very good for healing work. It's also why it's very good for bringing people out of depression because we cannot do any work. You can quote me on this. Again, noticing if there's a less density now in your experience, more relaxed feeling. So you can quote me on this. You cannot do any healing work until you learn how to downregulate your nervous system and relax your body. You, you just can't. Like we, we have not been able to do any healing work in states of tension. And so one of these beautiful um, things that you can be a benefactor of, of learning how to come into awareness, so you guys can kind of like come back to your your normal state. Yeah, and someone's saying peripheral vision, exactly. Uh, yeah, who is a... Uh, Hukalau, yeah, it's the spiritual Hawaiian practices, right? Like uh, ho, ho pono pono and all this stuff is also, right? It's just, it's all, all the same practices coming from a lot of different spiritual traditions. Um, and yeah, peripheral vision is another way to say it. Like it can, it's a, it's an access point for altered states of reality. It just helps the body relax. And so there are, we're playing here with some really, really basic stuff. There are many, 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 many levels of, 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 on localized awareness and then awake aware states and all sorts of different uh, simultaneous states that we can attain in order to go into much higher states of consciousness and then look back at our experience from those conscious states and start noticing things that we would never be able to notice from a conditioned mind. But again, I want to re retort here is that we cannot heal. The body does not release things from its system until we are in a relaxed state. So it's why hypnosis starts with getting you sleepy and getting you relaxed. And it's because they understand this principle that's like, if the mind is active, if you're localized in the mind, you are just operating inside of the conditioning you already have. And so this is why cultivating practices like these that we're kind of outlining here, and this is really what we work on um, in our live events, our two day intensives and all our programs is not just, hey, Let's understand how the mind works, which is very, very good because it's going to help you with integration practices later on as you start going through experiences. So we absolutely want the foundation in. However, if you really want to step into a whole new world that very, very few people are, are playing in these days, certainly in the more Western minded type of uh, philosophies and personal development practices, going into awareness, going into energy and luminosity practices is, is honestly is a revelation for people. It is, is one of the most awe-inspiring experiences they ever have. And the moment the foundation is in, the moment people locate, so to speak, their awareness and are able to come back to it with free will and choice as often as they like, then it's really just a matter of cultivating it on a daily practice, uh, on a daily basis, in order to expand it into much, much higher states. And, and this is what helps people start going from, hey, I'm just growing and transforming to I'm fully healing this aspect of myself I no longer need to manage this piece. I'm not coping with it anymore. It's really as if it's no longer happening. And it is such an eye-opening experience to be in a situation with a parent or in business or around your health, you know, something that really gets you normally and like really pisses you off or makes you very sad or makes you feel alone. And that stimulus that you have experienced your whole life is happening, but there's no response in your body to that stimulus happening. It's as if it's not occurring at all. And you're actually going to have this moment with yourself where you're like, like, respond to this. The brain's like, I got nothing. Like, and then that's just how it is. And this moment kind of flows over you and, and you don't become this stiff thing that gets attached to it. It just, again, it, it shows up. Huh, I notice it. And it arises, but that's because the, the stimulus that usually gets attached to it in the system has been worked out, so to speak, has been healed and no longer needs to respond to that thing. And then you start noticing it's actually happening less to the point where it may not happen at all anymore. And that's, that's to us what true healing is. It's not, okay, I know how to deal with this better. It's you don't have to deal with it at all. 
It's just arising and passing now. Uh, so I know here we're short on time, so I'll just let you guys know um, if you're interested in this level of work, here's how you can participate. Um, the, the best thing to do, in our opinion, is to pop into our uh, level one training. We do a, a mindset and emotional mastery training. It's a six week training program, and it also includes uh, six weeks of live group coaching uh, with one of our veteran coaches, uh, Nikki, who's here in the box. Um, you guys, a lot of you guys end up talking to her. She's also the person that does the coaching on the, uh, on the Tuesday calls and takes people through these experiences. Um, and what's worth noting is come the new year, we're actually, um, we're going to triple the cost of that program. So right now that program is sub $500 for six weeks of coaching. Okay. This is a program Elon and I used to put on live. We used to charge $4,500 for it. So the value in there is absolutely ridiculous. And again, anybody who's, uh, participated in L1 or is currently participating. If you want, you can write in the box or we can, you can hook up with them and ask them questions. But the value in there is through the roof. The program is absolutely life-changing. Okay. Uh, we want to let you know that if you want to, you know, the prices are going up before uh, at the end of the year so that if you do want to participate, you have a sense of urgency and uh, you figure out how to get in there um, before December 31st. Uh, if that's too big of a commitment for you and you real and you figure like, ah, I like this work, but I don't want to commit to a six week program. That's totally fine. We have our next, uh, two day intensive coming up in middle of January. That's January 15th and 16th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we call that our intuitive mind intensive. And if you want to get tickets for that, you can uh, buy tickets directly for that. So here's how you participate in either one. If you want to just get a ticket, you just go to intuitive mind dot live and you can just go enroll and buy yourself a ticket um, if you want to join level one we only do level one through an application process okay so if you want to apply for level one that doesn't mean you're committing to take the work it just means that you want to find out if it's a good fit for you you want to have a conversation with someone from our team you want to head to that link that i just posted right there that's souls and seekers.com forward slash apply and that's going to take you over to a very short, about three, maybe five minute long um, questionnaire just to give us some information about you. And then you can hop on a call with someone from our team. It's only about 15 minutes long. You guys can chat back and forth, find out if your goal, like we'll find out about you, what your goals are, and then we'll assess whether or not this program is a good fit for you to be in. Um, and then we can approve you to be in that work. They'll send you guys a link and you can uh, get that process rocking. Okay. So those are the two ways to... Um, begin your journey with Satori Prime and uh, with Elon and myself and our team here and really stepping into this uh, much higher quality level of work. So that's that. Uh, one, one last announcement. If you have been sitting on the sidelines wanting to join our level two or level three programs, okay? Um, again, also by application only, definitely speak to Nikki or Corey if you've kind of been sitting there like, I want to, I want to, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. I'm just letting you know alongside the... Uh, increase in price on level one will also be an increase in price on level two and level three. Both of those are going up by anywhere between 20 to 25% come January 1st. We have one more level two that is starting in the next 10-ish uh, days. Uh, there's still, I think, one or two seats still available for that. They're filling up very quick. So if you have been sitting on the sidelines, and you want you know that it's something that you want to do. I would absolutely save yourself a bunch of shekels and uh, and, and jump into that immediately. Otherwise, you will just be paying uh, more for uh, for that experience. Yeah. So thank you for being here today. Uh, I will play you out with a uh, test like just a testimonial reel, so you guys can get a sense, especially if you're new to um, the type of work, the type of experiences people have. And I really want to focus this uh, these conversations that these people will have with you on awareness practices. These are people who have been deeply trenched in personal development. We have a client right now who's done personal development for 35 years, and he, she said spending two days with us was the single most profound experience she's ever had in growth work. And we're not saying this to, to bump our egos or boost them. We're just telling you the work that we do here uh, is, is highly unusual for the personal development landscape. This is the work that, you know, the men and women have done sitting in caves. This is work that's done in mystery schools with small groups of people and has been mostly kept 
from society. And, and we truly believe, and a lot of our teachers believe that the time for that type of work is past. And now it is really time for this uh, work to propagate into society and to be given to people so that they can really step into a whole new evolution of being human. Um, and that's been our experience and being in this work for many years now that it's just, it's beyond what the mind can comprehend and how that opens up possibilities and opportunities in your life is, is certainly unimaginable to most people. So um, enjoy these. And if you have any questions, our team is always here. Uh, you can always say, contact me in the box below and just let us know if you want to chat. And uh, we're always here to support you in any way that we possibly can. Guys, um, year is almost over. So, um, you know, this is a great, great gift to give to yourself to step into the new year. We love you very much. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you next time. When you put words to something that is inexplicable, how do you try to convey, other than I hope the energy and the love you can feel coming through this, like how amazing and cracked open I feel, how after a life's journey of traumas and bliss and books and self-development and walking the Camino de Santiago, which was 800 kilometers in 33 days of meditation and being connected to, to earth and interacting with other pilgrims for all over the world. What an amazing experience that was. That changed me, but I can't tell you how much more two days um, with all these beautiful souls online in this event, how much more that even cracked me open, how, how that did crack me open, uh, finally cracked me open. The deep-seated feelings of well-being, of connection, those aha moments, going into this with no expectations, with my heart open, uh, it's, it's life-altering. Um, I sort of equate it to being when you first fall in love with someone and how blissful that is and everything's great and wonderful and that, you know, it's the honeymoon period. But this is not that. This is the honeymoon period with yourself, which is never going to end. I cannot stress enough how much this is actually easy, as they had said. Um, come if you're called. Come if you're engaged. My experience, I can tell you, is not atypical. It's extremely typical for those that open up and feel this connection together. Can you do things on your own? Absolutely. Can you do things one-on-one -on -one with coaches? Fabulously. Can you, I get chills saying this, can you grow in leaps and bounds when you connect with a large group of like-minded souls, the energy between us all, the love, that deep-seated feeling of wellness and connection, you're not alone. You're here for a reason. Nothing's a coincidence. Like it just all clicks and becomes this most beautiful experience. I hope for any of you that are remotely called to do this, that you will seek these people out, this organization out, this love out, because it's there for you. It's that easy. I went to their two day event this last weekend and it's just been such a phenomenal growth in my path. I felt like it's exactly what I've been asking for. Um, I had this amazing ability to really truly come inside myself, listen, so easy. I've been, quote, trying for years, but I think that was part of the problem. I was trying too hard. And um, when they mentioned just without effort, it almost gave me the permission to just literally feel and drop in and allow, allow whatever was coming up. And in their meditations and in their deep energetic work, I felt so much that it was, it was shocking to me. And I've been able to continue throughout the last few days since the event. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful. Um, I'm currently in some challenging times and I feel like That was the missing piece. I'd been trying to do it from my mind and not knowing how to really deeply go into my body and feel and heal. And that process was unleashed during this event and I'm continuing it. And I'm just, I'm so amazed at how easy and how effortless it really is. Been on a path of embodiment for many years. Um, lots of self-awareness and personal growth, but. It's like that wasn't enough. I felt stuck and I knew and I felt that there was a lot of 
stuck energy and you know past pain and in my body and I didn't know how to touch it even with all the different modalities I've done um, this is a missing piece that I've been asking the universe to show me and when the student is ready the teachers appear and that's what has happened and I'm excited to work with Guy and Elan some more and um, I'd encourage anybody who's thinking about this in this work event in the future to consider it um, because it's really powerful, powerful, deep, transformational work. Thank you. I just experienced the second two-day intensive with Guy and Elon and Satori Prime, and it's overwhelming. Um, the number one thing is the support. Two, and I said this on day one of the two day, the abundance of honesty that comes out of this work is in and of itself medicine, honest with yourself, honest with listening to other people and their stories, not taking it in to a point where it affects you, but taking it into a point where it allows you to feel and to move through it with them and within yourself. And that's what this program does. I, at least it has for me. And to feel all of the feels and to not be afraid of them and to have the support when you wanna turn around and walk away, they say no. You don't have to. They don't tell you you can't, but they tell you, you don't have to. And in doing so, it opens up so much more. The field of energy that was coming through on day two was so overwhelming that when my other half walked in to give me some news regarding one of my stressors, I didn't see him. I saw the energy and I saw the emotion and I felt it. I knew it and I was so protected and so safe that that moment alone was worth all the weight and gold. This is a, a powerful thing. I can see it changing my life in good ways, in ways that I still question and in ways that I want to still question. Thank you to the entire Satori Prime family. Thank you. I'm better today than I was yesterday. I was better yesterday than I was two months ago when I signed up for round one. And I can't wait to see where this journey takes me and us together because I know that we're gonna be better a month from now, a year from now, because we're doing the work. So, thank you. Mwah. So I've been trying to find what happened to me that day and the new traumatic experiences just kept happening to me. And it felt like each one, the next would be more extreme than the last. Um, it didn't matter how many books I read, how much I prayed, how much I meditated. I went to counseling. I still am in counseling. I've been going to counseling my whole life. Um, I had a life coach. I'm actually training to become a life coach as well. Working out, vision boards, affirmations, you name it, I did it. I wanted to know all about it, but it didn't help me stop my cycles. In that second meditation, I've come to aware that I took all of those moments for granted. Um, and that was sad. And it was probably a really big disappointment to look at myself like that, that I have all of these beautiful days that I'm wasting and I could be present for them all. Not only for myself, but for, for a lot of people out there. 
sorry. No, I'm not, actually. <laughs> I'm supposed to feel that. I'm gonna allow that in. Every experience can be different. It truly was a pivotal moment for me of where there was before this experience and after it. And I know that it's only catapulted me to only further my growth. And that to me is something that I can't, I can't think enough and I can't be more grateful for. Um, so if you guys are wanting to do this experience, I encourage it. Um, I encourage you to do as many experiences as you can because it's, it's life changing and it's amazing. And I, I can't thank enough everyone, even for the many groups and everything after it that they provide is support with like-minded individuals that I honestly, I, I'm, I'm so filled with happiness and so much gratefulness in my heart that there's no dictionary to describe this kind of stuff, but I hope that I was able to, you know, put it into a little part of, um, a testimony for you guys and explaining it as the best I could. I love you all. It's been uh, a wonderful two days, emotional, and I just had to take a couple days to process it all because it just seemed, but it was very, very um, intense and it was a wonderful journey to be on, that's for sure. There's two reasons for me that, that hurdles that I kind of had to take. Um, excuses right we make up excuses um for ourselves and um whatever they are i don't have the money i don't have the time um it's not the right time for me or i can do it on my own whatever uh you have those excuses and you go back and forth in your own head and um the other thing was that i i thought i could do it alone that i needed what i really needed was i needed help and i i actually came face to face with that and so those two kind of things came to a head plus talking to Nikki and Corey I decided what what can I lose really right so you go back and forth in your own mind and at least I do talk to myself too much so I took the faith, the leap of faith and I went and I took the, cor the two-day course and I am so proud and happy for myself that I did um, it took me, like I said, a couple days to process it all because it was so intense and um, just the collective. It's a, it's such a safe, um, loving, um, protected place to be. You don't have to be afraid. And if you're, we're on the fence, walk, going back and forth like I was. I recommend that you just. Just do it. It's a gift for yourself. The support, the love, that's exactly what I needed. I needed to have someone to tell me that, you know, I'm worth it and that I'm not alone, that there's other people out there on the same journey has have the same feelings as well. Thank you so much for just being there. It's amazing. Love you. I'm trying to put into words the experience that I had which is actually quite difficult. I went on a journey for the best part of it. Um, Guy and Alan are very, very good at guiding people. And obviously within this event, there was you know around 50 odd people all sharing this experience with me, which created a very powerful um, energy field. And as they were guiding us and they were then uh, to get people to understand and help you understand uh, certain aspects of yourself we are multi-dimensional beings um we live in multiple realities at the same time and i think what happens is we get pulled into this reality you know as, as beautiful as it is well through our senses um and that isn't every reality there is lots of other areas that for us to explore and guy and Alan are very good at guiding you to open up these different pathways, these different uh, realities. So for me personally, deeply connected to the earth, I felt almost just part of the energy field of the earth at times. I was connected to what I can only describe as beings of light, um, which were 
coming to visit me. Um, you know, even maybe ancestral parts of my ancestry, and uh, that was very a very powerful experience. And even beyond that, you know, I was viewing the Earth from the Moon. Um, there was a lot of a lot of visuals for me. Um, and I found it very, very powerful to hear everyone else's story as well, and every, everyone else's experience, should I say. Um, you know, there was a lot of people, they were opening up parts of themselves that maybe hadn't been open for a very long time, and there was a lot of healing going on. And I found that absolutely amazing. I think for me personally, what I can bring from, and what I've experienced, and what Gynaland really helped with, is we have a very busy reality you know we live very very fast lives um we have we have been conditioned or we've conditioned ourselves to live like this everything moves at quite a quite a fast pace including our thoughts now um i don't think it's always been like this in fact i know it hasn't always been like this and so what this really helps you do is just take in the the stillness of everything and it allows you to really sink in and just allow that stillness to be. And that is by far the most powerful thing I took from this experience. And I think many others would do as well. And if you haven't been on it, I would definitely recommend going on it, 100%. Like I say, it's hard to put into words the experience. So I didn't know what to expect from the two day intuitive mind event. And um, honestly, I was a little bit anxious about spending that much uninterrupted time just focused on me. Um, but I'm so glad that I followed my intuition and participated because it far exceeded any expectations that I could have conceived before. Um, not only was the event itself powerful and transformative, but now it's four days later and I have received daily more downloads, information, um, just insights that have been really special. There's been a new level of calm and peace and just trust in my body system since the event and that alone is priceless. I can't wait for more events. I think Guy and Elon are so knowledgeable and supportive and, um, you know, I can't wait to continue this beautiful journey with you. Thank you so much for the work that you do. I love you um, and you're really making the world a better place. So thank you. I, I pondered over doing this, trying to work out how do I explain what just happened. But the first thing, I guess for me, uh, a lot of the energy workshops I've done uh, is generally with women. It's generally, uh, it's not unheard of that I go to events and there's me and 19 other women at these events, held space by women. I just seem to be more attracted to, I guess, the feminine, if you want to, if you need a word. Um, or there's just not a lot of men going to these type of workshops. Uh, I never knew, I just go along. These two ha have cultivated within themselves the ability to hold gentle loving space um, and from from a big hearted man like me that to me is priceless in itself there's a there's a little bit of a a finding home and for a weekend where i did fuck all there was just space just To feel the transformation on the spot of people in the group from an energetic perspective, not from the words that they spoke perspective, I loved. What brought me to the event was just a, I'd only followed these guys, I stumbled across them, I've only followed them for a couple of months um, and just went, well oh, that feels alright, I'm not going to do that. Did I have some resistance after that decision? Of course, that's, I did. You know, what am I doing? A couple of fucking randoms on the internet, shit. Um, I have a little gullible piece, so I, you know, I'm very wary of being taken advantage of. Yeah, so for, for you, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's not an intellectual decision. If you're making an intellectual decision, it might not be right for you. There is changes that are possible. You just need to put your hand up. I've been on my self-development journey for five years now. 
and I have always had problems to sustain the energy in my body due to physical pains that I have. And these pains, they, they like feed the blockages that I have in my body. So um, falling into mind and stress and self-sabotage over and over again. Um, yeah, for me, it's just inevitable because I never really could hold that, um, that um, foundation inside, you know, that was missing for me. And uh, when I heard that guy in Ilan uh, had a live event coming up and um, somebody invited me, uh, if I wouldn't like to join because that was exactly what I was looking for, to get unstuck in my energy and unstuck in self-sabotaging myself. So my mind went a bit awire because I had a work weekend uh, that weekend and I didn't really have the financial means to join. So uh, I thought it over and I went to my boss and I was able to switch my work weekend around and I lent the money from my husband and um, yeah, I could attain, uh, attend. So because I knew not, not going was you know, just something when it feels right, you've got to, you've just got to get that. And that's what, uh, what that event was for me. And uh, during this event, what happened for me was, um, I've never felt something like that before. Nearly at the end of the event, when we were invited to join an exercise, it just released a, a wave of ugliness and shame inside myself that flooded out me. I could see and feel all that that blame, I, everything just flooded out. And what I realized was that I just forgave myself and I didn't know that that was a work that I still needed to do. And when that happened, um, it was as if my solar plexus just opened up when all that wave of ugliness and shame went outside my body. I can't explain it any, um, any otherwise. And I couldn't grasp these feelings that happened over the two days, but it, it was as if my body and soul were getting ready to release all that. So I didn't understand it, but my body already and my soul knew what was happening to me. And um, it was just amazing that everything inside myself knew that I couldn't carry those and handle those feelings anymore. So at the end of that exercise, everything that blocked me was just gone. And it was always as if my solar plexus was pushing me down and now it is as if I have a strong person inside myself like the strong energy that that opens up I, I don't know how to explain that and it's just a feeling like oh god um, even just expressing my 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 feelings on camera like this or being vulnerable um, it's just nothing that I've ever done so this is really new to me and it's it's um, I'm, I'm nervous but it's it's already it's also exciting to just be able to do this and and not hide underneath my my stomach anymore and just being pushed away so it's um yeah it's, it's fantastic uh, and these are really exercise and tools that a guy uses that guy use that everybody can learn so i think it's always been so overcomplicated to to get in touch with your feeling inside that a lot of people are afraid to do that and uh, i just went in open-minded and it's i just believe everything is possible now you know it's just yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. I've never felt more like myself than I do today. So really, I appreciate you guys, Elan. Thank you so much for the work that you two are doing with this beautiful community. And I just can't wait for the next live event to happen. So until we see each other again, all the best to you. And thank you. Thank you very, very much for just setting me free and yeah, just making me smile the whole day. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. I walked in with an open mind and um, what I walked out with was a lot more than that. I walked out with an open heart, an open mind and a whole new experience and it was so worth it. A life changing experience I could call it that. I've never felt that way before. I have read many books, I have taken some courses. I have been working on my personal development and uh, I found uh, the weekend has uh, changed me forever. Uh, I felt at peace, I felt secure, I felt safe, I felt loved and I felt completely tranquil and it's still. And it was an amazing, amazing, amazing experience, uh, providing a very safe, comfortable, loving, supportive environment. They constantly reassured us. They were there to support us. And uh, we could feel that. And I thank you, thank them so much for that. 
I felt like I was flying high that day, uh, the, the point that I had reached through those two days in my experience, in my meditations. I have never reached that level before. Also, the people that attended in the group, everyone was amazing. Such great experiences, uh, gave you so much perspective, insights on what everyone is experiencing and how we can, you know, help support each other, learn from each other, and also build friendships uh, in the Facebook group that we have. Uh, that is a wonderful thing. Um, I'm checking it every day and uh, it's, it's just amazing the amount of beautiful souls out there and I highly recommend this and I hope and uh, hope you to come and join our live experience once again and, and see what it's all about and you too will see that it is life-changing and I thank you all, and I hope to see you there.